Hello Reef friends to today's uh, fish video. Today we are in week four, um, four weeks since I moved the big tank into my fish room and I just do the little series, uh, the video series here about that, um, the progress of the tank because I um, turned a lot of, lot of things around in the tank. I moved, took out a lot of rocks, uh, stirred up all the sand. I did actually everything I usually would always say to not do uh, in a fish tank if you want to have stability and success. So I actually, uh, when I moved that to the fish room, uh, as an experiment wanted to see how much it really impacts my reef when I kind of stir everything around and now we are in uh, week four and um, things are still doing good. I actually did a water change. Um, I did in the, in the sump itself. Um, I did the water change that I stirred up all the dirt in the sump with uh, some power heads. And then I just kind of crank a little bit up my protein skimmer and get everything out like this. That's a good way for me to do a tiny little water change, but also to get all the de debris out of the, of the sump that's always uh, on the bottom in the sump. So I, said, I did that one and I definitely also got my high uh, phosphate a little bit down. I was on almost crazy 0.43 uh, for the P, uh, for the phosphate, and now after the water change, I'm 0 0.36. I measure that uh, once a week, usually sometimes every two weeks with the Hena phosphate uh, ultra low. I feel like it's called ultra low phosphate uh, Hena Hena checker, and um, especially because. When I did some other tests and when you have to look to the color and everything, I, I never really know what value that is. Like you have all these colors you have to kind of compare to. So that's why I definitely like these henna checkers. I can also put that in the uh, description below that you can check out these henna checker tools. Um, they are definitely very good. I have um, three of them. I have the, the high range nitrate one. I wouldn't really recommend the low rate nitrate one unless you really buy that by purpose. Um, the high range one, uh, it, it's usually not like ultra ultra accurate, so it's plus minus couple uh, numbers. So it could be like one or two uh, points off or something like this, but I'm not too kind of um, scared about this. I just kind of need to know a little bit the ballpark since I anyway keep my reef usually uh, at 10 uh, parts per million for the nitrate. Uh, so I'm not in that ultra low uh, uh, nitrate level where I have to have a much, um, a much kind of uh, more accurate uh, description of that one. So other than this, uh, what else I did was I added a little fan here uh, on top of the aquarium. Because I had the problem that always uh, I had a lot of condensation water here on that lid and it started a little bit to create mold here around because it was so wet all the time so I just definitely added that fan uh, in there and since I have now both reef tanks in that room I also added the little fan, uh, the ceiling fan that it just kind of circulates the air a little bit better around so that it's not that uh, high humidity here in that room. But other than this, um, one thing I actually came in this morning and I was super surprised. I had both, you maybe see here, the two brain corals. I have now in that corner and in this corner uh, because I had them quite close together, maybe around three to four inches apart from each other and I kind of thought it's enough that they don't start to uh, have that warfare going on between each other. But when I came in this morning, I saw, saw a lot of strings from the one coral to the other one uh, because somehow the tentacles, uh, tentacles, I kind of, uh, they got hold of each other. So that guy here started to eat uh, the one here on the left. So I definitely, had to immediately take them away. I actually wanted to 
also captured that a little bit on video, but I didn't want to sacrifice my coral uh, to get a to get another shot, so that's why I immediately just uh, put my hand inside and pulled them, uh, the two of them apart. But other than this, uh, also sand bed is doing good. I did uh, vacuuming of the sand bed, of the whole sand bed. Uh, I would say that was a week ago and uh, I don't have any negative impacts of that one. I usually don't do it too often because A, I haven't done a lot of water changes on that system as well, which I actually now realize, especially since the values went a little bit uh, up, that I have to start doing that uh, again a little bit. So for everybody who is newer to the hobby, definitely do your water changes. It's a good thing. Um, I was just able to get away with it, but I feel like now I'm at the stage um, where, as I said before, my phosphate is at point three six and that's definitely on the higher side nitrate when i tested it today it was actually only about um, four parts per million so i i dosed a little bit nitrates in the tank just that i don't uh, lose completely the ratio between nitrate and phosphate so i dosed a little bit about this and i also plan to uh, feed a little bit more of the frozen food um, and not only the pellets i think the pellet food I gave to that tank has just a lot, a lot of um, phosphate inside. So maybe it's because there's a lot of um, kind of that um, algae thing inside for the tanks and that creates that high phosphate. So I stopped a little bit with the, uh, with the, the feeder and just go, again, go ahead and do more frozen food, uh, like the meaty food. Uh, for that tank and I also started to feed now the frag tank a little bit um, I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but uh, the, Also the nitrates were pretty low in that tank almost zero when I tested it uh, today and uh, Phosphate was 0 0.4. So that was good um, but I think that was probably the, that's the biggest issue that I have uh, some coloration issues in that tank that I just have to bump a little bit the feeding up in that tank. Even I actually the, the original plan was to not do any feeding on that tank, but I just don't really think I get away. If somebody has a very good tip about how to run a frag tank, uh, because I'm definitely not a frag tank frag tank expert uh, put it in the comments below i'm actually uh, curious to know how you guys are running your frag tanks the easiest thing would put, would be putting a fish inside or something like this and then just feeding the fish but um, i'm still kind of holding off with that one for now um, but maybe i add it then in the past because it's, it's really hard to keep it up and i just I definitely have already a lot of corals in that tank and I don't really want to, to lose it, um, especially because of the coloration. The growth is still there, so I still see a lot of growth, especially on the, on the Montiporas. They are actually a crusting all over the place, but the problem is a little bit the coloration. Also polyp extension is good, especially on the Monty caps as well as on the Anacropora. Uh, see a lot, a lot of polyp extension, but the color just fades a little bit away. If somebody has a trick to color up uh, the corals, uh, let me know that one as well. I think it's definitely the lack of nutrients inside of that one. But yeah, that's, things are doing good. I definitely plan to do uh, again an, a better overlook about the frag tank. I kind of, at the moment, I had that problem with a lot of uh, the diatoms inside, the little outbreak of that algae and bacteria inside, but now it kind of, uh, it's calming down a little bit. So now I'm more happy to kind of make than a, a video, but I, I just don't like to make any videos when my tanks are not doing well and show them in a very, very dirty way. But I feel like in the end, that's maybe also the reality that we have all these reef tanks and they are not always perfect and we should be actually good with that because if you always want to make things absolutely, absolutely perfect in the reef tank copy, maybe you 
rather run than into issues other you spend like so much time to keep up with all of uh, those ones. Also if you guys are interested how much time I actually spend keeping up with uh, these two systems I usually only do maintenance uh, on Saturdays or sometimes on Sundays uh, definitely not during the week then I'm too busy but I would say on Saturdays and Sundays I spend sometimes around uh, two to three hours, maybe sometimes four hours to clean everything. Uh, it's also, I, I enjoy that pretty much to do a little bit of work around. It's almost a little bit relaxing to do the work uh, with your reef tank. Um, what I did this weekend as well is I actually took everything out of my sump, like the, the return pump, the filter roller, the uh, the skimmer took apart everything, cleaned it very well. I have a, a reminder on my watch that every three months it actually uh, gives me a reminder to clean your pumps. So I did all of that um, plus the little water change on that system. Um, but things are doing great. I also made a couple more pictures. I finally got my storm clownfish, a good picture of uh, those guys. They are usually always hiding on the back of the tank. So it's, um, you know, sometimes you feel like you have uh, that great, great reef in front of you and you just take out your camera and you make nice little shots, but then all the fish are constantly disappearing. Um, so it's, it's rather hard sometimes to get a good picture of them. And I can also tell you they are not waiting there for you to make a picture. So they're constantly swimming around super fast. So it's definitely hard to make uh, pictures of the fish, but Finally, finally, I got a good one of the storm clownfish. I feel like one picture I'm just missing is still from the Mandarin Gobi. I have actually a very, very nice, he is super fat because he gets a lot of uh, pots in that tank, co cocoa pots. And he is super fat and healthy, but he is constantly somewhere within the rock work. Uh, you see, I have these two big islands. So he is somewhere inside hunting these little co cocoa pots around um, but I, I definitely if I get a good shot from him uh, maybe another day I add that in another video but yeah as I said things are doing great um, all good the frag tank um, is I feel like the next uh, thing I have to take a little bit care about I also have to change the pump on that guy uh, today to make it a little bit easy for me, and it's not a super expensive uh, pump in the, in the Max Nano here. I actually bought the original Red Sea pump uh, twice for that tank. So every time I do maintenance, because the pump is only about like $30, $35 or something like this, um, I just swap them always out and then I have time to clean them so I don't uh, have the water flow off for a long time. That's also a good, I feel like, little maintenance tip if you obviously can afford it that you certain things on your tank, you buy two of them. So instead of ha having to uh, shut the water flow on the tank, tank down and then you have to take everything out and clean it in a, in a hurry, that you just buy two parts uh, or pieces of a, of a pump so you can just quickly exchange it and then you always have a backup one because that's definitely something that even happened to me already a couple times before that if you don't always take good care of your return pump, sometimes they just clog up and then uh, maybe you don't have a lot of time to properly clean that so you can just quickly swap it out and get the tank and the flow in the tank um, going again. But that's a little update for today. Um, let's see how long I keep that series he here going with that tank or then not focus uh, with some specialized uh, other video clips I'm doing. But for now I just kind of like to see if uh, the journey was successful and that's why I try to document that for you guys here as, uh, as good as possible. If you have any other questions um, feel free to put that in the comments and I'm happy to answer you that and um, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much.